What's going on guys? Today we are covering the Nessus Vulnerability Scanner. This is another um, Cyber Defense Path box. I think it's the next segment in them and we're gonna keep running through them. So hopefully you guys are enjoying the content. If you are, like, subscribe, make sure you hit the bell notification, it helps out so much. Um, I know everyone says that, but it does help out. It's the only way to grow the channel, guys. So I have to say it. I appreciate all the support we've got so far. So let's get into it. If you guys haven't messed with Nessus, there's one thing I'll say. This is a very popular, widely used um, vulnerability scanner across every industry, basically. Okay, So you're going to hear it called Nessus, Tenable, um, the military calls it ACAS. You can call it whatever you want, but Nessus is the company that and see or tenable is the company i'm sorry their product is the nessus vulnerability scanner but some people will call it whatever so keep that in mind if you hear tenable nessus acas any of that stuff it's kind of interchangeable um when you're talking about vulnerability scanners i understand there is a difference between them but i'm telling you industry-wide how people talk now one thing i'll say here is they do have a free version which is what we're going to cover today and they do have a paid version the paid version is obviously much better more free feature rich things like that one thing I'll also tell you guys is most companies will use this in the cloud, meaning they're not going to host this and install it the way we will. They will just pay a company to scan their system for them and they can see the results. So let's go ahead and go into installation. I already have it installed. I'm not going to make you guys sit through the install. Follow these exactly and it works just like it says. Um, for To register for an activation code, I just used a fake name and 10 minute email and got a activation code so you guys can do what you want with that keep going boom 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 this is all installation stuff and this is what it'll look like when you guys get it installed you'll put your target in here i've already put my target in and you can run a scan right off the bat so first set of questions first things first what is a vulnerability scanner well it's going to scan here's ours these are the scans we're going to run today but i'm just going to show you it's going to scan pretty much whatever we want. So you can see here, nice thing like log4j, if you wanna scan directly for log4j, it will do that for you. If you wanna scan WannaCry, it will do that for you. Um, the basic network scan, that's just gonna scan basic stuff. Now I will tell you, there's two types of scans that they're not, they, they kinda of talk about, but not really. One of them is credentialed scan and non-credentialed. So what that means is, if you don't give Tenable, Nessus, whoever, if you don't give them credentials to log into the machines and scan them, then what they will do is they'll scan them as if they were a criminal. They will scan them from afar and tell you what it, what they can see without logging in. Now, it's good to do these type of scans because you want to know what people see, right? But you also want to do credentialed scans because you want to log into the system, have access, and see what vulnerabilities really sit in there. It's a much more... Um, complete scan if you use a credential scan just letting you know but you can see here they do specific print nightmare log 4 4j they do like very specific attacks but they also do malware scans and things like that so this is a really good tool and this is the free version so keep that in mind this is a pretty good tool for free um, and then you can see one thing you can do here is configure a dynamic plugin scan without recommendations so what that means Basically, you can configure, can configure scans however you want. One thing that um, I've used in the past is that you can actually go through and plug in, make your own dashboards for all, if you, let's say you have a whole, totally Windows environment, you can then put, every time Windows comes out with a patch, you can patch your machines and run a scan that will check to see if all those machines are actually patched or not. So that's kind of the, the stuff you can do with it on top of just doing vulnerability scans. You can make sure your patching is up to date and things like that. So here we are, we're logged in. We're gonna go ahead and minimize it and look at the questions. So what is the name of the button which is used to launch a scan? That would be up here. Well, we already clicked it. Right there, new scan. So if you guys don't understand what the, this is for, right? It's for companies to do this across their entire network. They can scan, let's say you do a scan at. 2 a.m. so that way nobody's um, on the network and it will scan every machine on your network and it'll run for hours and then tell you all that aggregate information and puts it into a nice report for you. It's a really nice tool. So we have the new scan is the button up top. What side menu options allows us to create custom templates? And if you click on policies, it says right here, policies allows you to create custom templates. Okay, cool. 
So we can actually create our own templates, meaning when we log in, it'll show us whatever we want, not necessarily um, what it has now, which is just my scans. I can make this dashboard. This is so customizable, guys. I, I can't even explain it to you in short term, but you can make it literally. So every day you log on, it'll tell you, Hey, your, you know, your, your computer, let's say it's just your home network. You could say, Hey, your computer needs patching. Your iPhone needs patching. Your Google nest is, is up to date. Your smart plugins and all that stuff. I mean, you can make it scan everything and really tell you what vulnerabilities are there and you can log in every day and they'll tell you how they're responding, what's going on, everything. So it's really good tool. All right. So we know the policies is what allows us to make custom templates. What menu allows us to change the plugin properties such as hiding them or changing the severity? Well, probably the plugin rules, right? So there it is. Plugin rules allows us to change the plugin properties. All right, in the scan template section, after clicking new scan, what scan allows us to see what hosts are alive? So if we click the new scan and click, what'd they say? I forgot already. Click new scan, scan template section. Okay, so we need to look at the scan template section. So here's the scan templates, do, 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 and we're looking for a specific one that allows us to simply see if hosts are alive. Well, do any of them say that? Here we go. A simple scan to discover live hosts. Host discovery. Okay, so host discovery. Boom, there's your answer. All right, so what that's going to do is it's just going to scan and tell you, hey, you've got 50 hosts on your network. Let's say you only thought there was 25. Uh-oh, something's going on. So that's the type of stuff you can do just with very, very basic scans. You might not even realize that your neighbor's stealing your Wi-Fi. You might not know that. Well, it can run, you can run this scan on your network and it'll tell you everything on your network, right? All right. So one of the most useful scan types, which is considered to be suitable for any host. So what one is suitable for any host? A full system scan suitable for any host. So it's basic network scan. So that's just your basic scan. It's just going to do your very base level information. Um, what scan allows you to authenticate to host and enumerate missing updates? So this is what I was talking about. You can actually log in and check for updates. Credential patch, where is it at? Credential patch audit. Now, there's a common misconception with this, and I want to tell you. A lot of people say, well, why would I even need to do that? Running a scan is kind of pointless because, you know, I can just go on Windows Update and say, do I have an update? Yes, I do. Okay, download it. In an enterprise environment, meaning in the commercial world, in large companies, they don't just release patches, okay? So Windows might come out with a patch on Tuesday, you're not just going to go, hey, update all of our systems on our network. It's not going to work that way because you'll crash a lot of systems. What you do is you have to test them. You have to know which ones can and can't have it. You'll usually have like a QA process where they're going to go through and test the patches to see if they work without crashing certain systems. And then they use what's called WSUS or SCCM or whatever you want to use, a different set of servers or tools to push patches out to all the different systems depending on their group settings and things like that. So you may you may not even realize that you didn't approve those patches in WSUS or SCCM. You didn't send that package out. You may not even know you didn't do that. You may think, yeah, I did that, so they should all be patched. And then you run that patch audit and 100 machines are two months behind because you didn't actually go in and physically approve them. So keep that in mind. That's why the patch audit is important. It's not because your computer can't check for updates by itself. It's a lot of systems and companies do not allow Windows updates. They manually install them for good reason. Okay, now what scan is specifically used for scanning web applications? Well, probably, I'm just going to take a guess here, probably the one that says web application tests. So let's see. Web application test, perfect. Okay, so now we're actually gonna scan. So we have our start machine here, or we have our machine here, sorry, and we're gonna run a network scan. So create a new basic network scan, targeting the VM, what options can we set under the basic on the left? All right, so if we do a new scan, which we're here, and we just do a basic network scan, what options can we set? So on the left here, under what, what was it? On the left, what option can we set under basic on the left? So under basic, what options can we set? Schedule, notifications, so we can set the schedule. 
So we can change when it runs. Let's say you guys have a 24 hour operations, but you have, you know, four hours that you schedule where we're going to have more network traffic. You stay away from those times, right? Because you don't want this to clog up your network because it's going to be sending packets to every machine. Okay. So under discovery on the left, set the scan to cover all the ports. So you go to discovery and you can see these, these can get pretty advanced if you want them to. And you say port scan all ports. So that's going to scan 65,000 ports. That's going to take a little bit, right? And that's okay. You've, you're going to run this in the middle of the night. You, don't, you have all the time in the world. Okay, so now what scan type can we change under advanced for lower bandwidth? So let's say you have a, you know, a fairly small company and you don't have much bandwidth. You notice here's the difference. Two simultaneous hosts. It's only going to scan two hosts at a time. If you have high bandwidth, it's going to scan 30 simultaneous hosts and so on and so forth. It's going to keep taking that information down so that you can scan much slower and not run your network dry basically. Okay. So now it says with these options, select and launch the scan. Okay. No answer needed. After the scan is complete, which vulnerability in the port scanners family can we view the details to open up the port? So let's go ahead and open up that scan. So remember we already did the scan cause I didn't want to sit here all day. We go to tests vulnerabilities. And if we go back to it, we're looking for, which vulnerability in the port scanners family can we view the details to see what ports are open? So if we look through here, this one's in the family of port scanners. There's only one. So there's our answer. Nessus SIN scanner. And if you click on it, you can see it tells you what ports open on this. Perfect. Okay. So that's good information. So this can be used as a scanner, just like in map or something. It just takes a lot longer because it's much, much more detailed in depth and builds reports. All right, so what Apache HTTP server is reported by Nessus? So here we've got to find what um, what actual version it is. And you can see here, Apache HTTP server version. Boom. And what's your version? 2.4.99. So you see it right there, guys. So it's pretty simple to, to figure out what information you need. It's pretty easy to read. Okay. So we're getting ready to dive into scanning a web application. So this is the last section and it's also going to be a little bit more in depth. Before we do that though, I do want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Manscaped. If you guys don't know, manscaped.com code stuffy24 gives you guys basically the deal of a century. No, it, it does give you 20% off. It gives you free shipping. It's really good deal. I use Manscaped a lot. I use it, um, obviously to groom everything. And then this is the nose hair trimmer. I usually show the lawnmower on here, but I actually was using it. So, but this is the nose hair trimmer you can hear. That's how quiet it is. I don't know if you guys could even hear it because it was so quiet, but this thing works so well because they just don't nick you. That's the thing. Like, I'm not even joking. I don't, I would, I'm literally wearing a Manscaped shirt and that's not even for the ad. I literally am wearing this today and I would never wear something if I hated the product, right? Because people are going to ask me about it. So I wouldn't wear this. I wouldn't use it because I've used a lot of stuff and I usually get nicks and cuts and it's not waterproof. And this is waterproof, nick free. I mean, I don't have any issues with any of it. So I recommend it guys. If you guys want to use it, use code stuffy24 at checkout, get 20% off and get free shipping. Great deal, especially if you buy larger quantities of stuff like their bags and things like that. All right, let's go into task five, the last task. What is the plugin ID of the plugin that determines the HTTP server type and version? All right, so this is telling us to run a web application scan on the VM. So to do that, we would go back to scans, we would go to new scan, and we would click the web application test and we'd run it on the server. Now, I've already done that, here's web test. This will take longer, so keep that in mind. And you get more results. So now we need to find out what is the plugin ID of the plugin that determines the HTTP server type and version. Okay, so we need to find the HTTP server version. So here's the server type and version. Let's see, is that right? Let's see. What is the plugin ID of the plugin that determines the HTTP server type and version? Okay, well that's not the right plugin, so we must have the wrong vulnerability. All right. Let's see what we got. Let's go to some of these. 
that's directory enumeration. So you can see it kind of puts stores a couple of them. Like this one has three, this one has four. So you got to go through them a little bit. Here we go. HTTP server type and version. That's the one we were looking for. And you can see there's two ways to do this. One, you can see if you go here to the right, there's the plugin ID. The other way is if you noticed when I clicked on it, if you hover over it, it tells you the plugin ID. So that's perfect. So the plugins are what's actually being scanned in that instance. If you look at the plugins, it's going to tell you what's actually happening, looking for. Those are the kind of the back end processes that are happening, if you guys are curious. But um, now we'll go ahead and say what. So here's where you're going to see some interesting stuff because now we're looking at a web server. So what authentication page is discovered by the scanner that transmits credentials and clear text? So it found an authentication page that literally transfers stuff in clear text. Okay, so that's really bad, right? So let's go ahead and click here. Web server transmits clear text. So when you log in, your credentials are just going to clear text so people can just steal them. And there you go, there's the page, login.php. So now if we go here, login.php. Now you can see how this would be useful if you're a company or a you know, anyone that creates a website and you run this scan before you publish the, the website, even during, and you notice, oh crap, we're showing people's clear text passwords. We can fix that real quick, right? That's what, that's what this is for. This is to scan all the time so you can fix things as they come up. All right. What's the file extension of the config backup? Now you can just guess this because dot back is normally the file extension, but we would go here and we'd say backup files disclosure. So it actually tells us that you can see the backup files. That's not good. And you can see right there, config.inc.php.back. So it's a .back file, which stands for backup. Okay, now which directory contains example documents? This will be in a PHP directory. Okay, so we're looking for specific example documents. So browsable web directories. Okay, so these are directories we can go to that maybe we probably shouldn't. So some of this, for instance, this might find these and you might say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I want everyone to go to those. That's fine. So some of this is just informational. It's not necessarily a risk, but what is a risk is when here's your docs examples. Let's say that was docs passwords or something like that. That's a problem. So here is external PHP IDS 0.6 docs examples. That's the file that it's asking us for. And there's the actual directory. All right, so now what vulnerability in this application is susceptible to that is associated with X frame options. So if you already knew this, click jacking is associated with X frame options. You may already have known that. So just by the question, you might be able to figure it, have figured it out. But if you go here and you go to web application potentially vulnerable to click jacking, here's what I love about these scanners. Let's say you've never heard of click jacking. Not only does it tell you, hey, it's vulnerable. Here's what the login PHP is the one that's vulnerable. Here's the issues it gives you the description of exactly what's happening. The remote web server does not set an X-Frame options response header or a content security policy. Response header in all content responses. This could potentially expose the site to click jacking or UI redress attacks. And, and then here it tells you exactly what the attack is, in which an attacker can trick a user into clicking an area of a vulnerable page that is different than what the user perceives it to be. So they could have you click on an area that they think is one thing and it's something else. And then right there, performing fraudulent or malicious transactions, it's dangerous. And now you know it's dangerous because it's telling you. So this is where a company then goes and says, okay, we have these issues. Here's how we're going to fix them. Is it cost effective to fix it? Is it worth the risk, right? So for instance, if you have web directories and your docs folder is exposed, and that has some information about the company, but nothing crazy, no sensitive information. Are we really gonna spend a lot of time locking that down? Probably not, because it's not that dangerous for them to see it, right? But if this, where we store social security numbers or something like that, yeah, we need to lock that down now and we need to pay what it costs no matter what, right? So these are the pros and cons. You have to start weighing those once you start getting into large companies, because you might scan a network for a large company and there might be 500 vulnerabilities. Not all of them are really vulnerable or vulnerabilities, excuse me. Some of them are false alarms. Some of them are just informational. And that's the nice thing about this. It tells you what's informational, meaning, yeah, it might be vulnerable, but you might be okay with it. So that's Nessus, guys. Nessus is one of the best tools out there. I highly recommend it. I recommend you guys try it, mess with it, run it on your own system. I have it on my personal computer um, and I have it run every night. So 
Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Hopefully you guys understand what Nessus is used for. And hopefully you guys have fun trying it because you can really get specific with these tests and have a lot of fun. So thanks guys. I appreciate you and you guys have a good one.